Okay. Oh, you see, I think he's having an attack already. Watson, from the very beginning, he was, I could tell he was like a special dog, just how he acted. And um, there was just something more to him than a normal dog. Watson uh, has been our uh, pet for nearly two years now, a year and a half. Um, and he's a pretty special dog. He's a narcoleptic dog. My name is Servan. Um, I'm a printmaker and a book artist, and I'm Watson's mom. <laughs> we adopted him. Um, we adopted him in summer of 2014. The process went through my husband, who studies narcolepsy, and he got contacted by a vet, and they thought he, he may have narcolepsy. And so Emmanuel, who is an expert on narcolepsy, was contacted. I receive phone calls from veterinarians, you know, several times per, per year. Uh, usually they are patients, you know, canine patients, <laughs> who have a problem with narcolepsy and the vet doesn't really know what to do, so he's asking me for advice on how to treat the dog. And uh, I try to help as much as I can. I knew that in people, but I never knew dogs had that, so it was quite unusual for me. So narcolepsy is a disease where people fall asleep very quickly and they're tired all the time. What's particular about narcolepsy is that people go straight into REM sleep. So, you know, rapid eye movement sleep is normally a stage of sleep that you have in the middle of your night. For dogs, what's the most clear is cataplexy. So it's when you get emotionally excited, boom, they collapse, they become paralyzed. The same way as during REM sleep. He has attack because he's very, very excited. He, uh, normally when he eats chicken or a treat, uh, her back legs start to fall, uh, fall down and he start to be in a sigh and faint. So sometimes they would just directly go into dreaming and have uh, like weird dream hallucinations. Sometimes they wake up from a dream but they're still paralyzed so they can't move. And sometimes, which is the symptoms that are most odd, when patients get emotionally excited, when they're laughing, joking, happy about something, suddenly they feel weak and they kind of lose their muscle tone, like during REM sleep. And uh, the same happened in dogs with narcolepsy, except that it happens when they are happy with a cookie or playing together. The, the same disease can manifest differently in different people. Patients often, most often, have this attack of cataplexy when they are with friends, where they're happy, in family. You have to be comfortable. Being scared will inhibit the attacks. Watson probably gets hundreds of attacks every day. I mean, we don't see all of them. But they are relatively brief, you know. Only rarely does he have very, very strong attacks. Usually it's just a few seconds. A friend of mine ca called me and said that there's a little dog that I might want to watch. And I said, sure. So I called and I went over there and she interviewed me a little and then we decided that was the beginning of my Watson relationship. <laughs> One day he came back in the studio with the Watson and was love at the first sight. <laughs> He's just a love, yeah. You know, he was like one of the family. We were taking pictures with him. <laughs> He's very friendly, especially for a Chihuahua. Normally Chihuahuas are kind of barking and uh, spicy. He's very mellow. He always come and whack his tail, and put his uh, tummy up and waiting for a scratch. It's his favorite thing and he treats like all the other dogs. I really love the fact that in the night he'd always sleep with me in my room and then during the night he would climb up on the bed just to make sure I'm still there and I'd, pet, I'd have to pet him and then he would go back to sleep. I grew up with dogs, so I always loved dogs. I adopted a narcoleptic dog from Stanford named Bear. He would look at you and um, often start having these cataplexy attacks. And I think why, and, and Watson has that a little bit also. When he starts having this attack and he's looking at you and you're looking at him and he's just like kind of falling, having this attack and you feel like he just loves you. He's just like, you know, it's incredible. So it melts your heart. In terms of just an narcolepsy, I think it's, you know, there are huge similarities in, in the way of, you know, dealing with it. And For dogs, taking a nap is not so bad. If they are tired, they take a mini nap like now and boom, and they are back. In humans, the problem is it's a social, we are social animals, so it's very hard. Uh, you know, during the day, you know, they can't work, they have to take naps. Uh, and also, you know, they sometimes avoid uh, contacts with people because you can imagine it's really awful not to be able to laugh 
you know, if you laugh and then you become paralyzed, it's, it's really difficult. Some people avoid social situation, etc. You know. So for him, he has a lot of attacks when he plays or when he eats good food. You know, I think everybody that has a dog, you know, gets some attention on the street. Um, uh, but I have found that, you know, with Bear and then with Watson, I've been stopped so many times on the street, you know. If people won't, you know, really, you know, spend more time, then I'll, I'll go into the whole narcolepsy explanation. Some are just, you know, like, oh, you know, that's interesting. Some will just ask more questions. Or I think um, some people will also understand why I carry him because they, they see me carrying my dog around sometimes and they're like, oh, you know, she's just carrying her dog. And, and when they know that he has a sleep disorder and basically he just collapses, then they'll understand that. Sometimes he's very tired, so he kind of collapses regularly and he, oh my God, and we have to carry him, which I can tell you is much easier with a chihuahua than with a skipper. I mean, it can be pretty tough because it starts as early as seven years of age to 15, that's the peak of onset. Suddenly they feel completely weak, they sleep all the time, they can, cannot go at school, they gain a lot of weight, they lose muscle tone, people make fun of them. But fortunately, we have relatively good treatment. You can live a normal life if you are well treated. I think at about 80% of times, you can bring back about 80% functioning. He loves to sniff around and run. If he has had a good you know, run in the morning, he'll mostly snooze at the studio. So Create 3 is, you know, the uh, partnership of Paloma Lucas, that you know, um, myself and Watson. In a studio E3 in Caverly, but this is the reason they Create 3. But we say we are three people there, well, three artists there. It's Servan, myself and Watson, because in his way he's an, art, an artist also. So he's been featured in some of our collaborative artwork. He's been uh, screen printed on, you know, for, you know, projects. Um, he even printed for us with his pose. So we have the Poe of Watson on some of our design. So he's been, you know, a figure in the, in the studio. Watson has been a, a permanent member of the studio because he came here at the beginning and he's, um, you know, he's at the studio normally most of the time, at least when I'm, when I'm around. Watson uh, come every, every, every time with uh, Servan and she go from her bed to outside. <laughs> he's always checking who is coming, who is not coming. Man ask me to grab him or, or sometimes I, when I don't want, I want to make a break, I go to his little bed and I start to say hi to him and touch him. We love to have him. It's very re relaxing to have a, a animal who, when you feel like you are tired to be working in a project or frustrated, you go and pet him. He's, he's just, you know, part of Creative 3. Um, yeah, he's a little bit of a star. I bring Watson to the, to the uh, clinic sometimes uh, because, as I mentioned, I treat a lot of young kids with narcolepsy and it is true that they crack up. It's, it's nice of them to see that there are other other people and animals that can have narcolepsy. It's, it's good for them to know that it's a problem and it can be treated. And I mean, showing them that a dog can have it is, is a good way to demonstrate that. So it's an inspiration for us and for many other people. Sometimes, you know, they feel even more sorry for the dogs than themselves. <laughs>